Let me see if you can guess the political party I'm describing. They're a closed circle of power brokers. They ignore their own rules that were democratically ratified. They violate their own core principles. And they even endorse people who don't commit materially to the party. Did you guess? Would you be surprised if I told you this describes the Green Party from the locals all the way up to national? <sighs> Unfortunately, this is the true situation we're in. The anti-corruption party of grassroots democracy and decentralization is going through a crisis, and I believe it's the core reason why winning is such an uphill battle for us. Like many of you, I left the Democratic Party several years ago because I couldn't put up with the corruption, the lip service to oppress people, and the overall departure from basic democratic principles. I joined the Green Party less than a decade ago because I wanted to be in a place where my voice as a working class Latina would matter and to work alongside people who shared my values of people, peace, and planet over profit. My hopes for the Green Party were to finally be in a party of democracy, of transparency, of accountability. That there would be a level playing field for the oppressed people of this country. That above all, honesty and ethics would be core values we could count on. And where at least where there were ideological differences, our democratically ratified processes and rules could be the arbiter. But the sad truth that this is not happening in the Green Party today. If we're being perfectly honest, our party does not operate democratically. Too often, bylaws and procedures are treated as an inconvenience and as optional. People in leadership often refuse to even read our rules. Bylaws and rules are often disregarded to favor associates and friends of leadership. Even when rules are too cumbersome, leaders don't take advantage of periodic reviews to make them more accessible and easy to understand. And some people don't believe that the rules actually apply to them. These are the things that keep us from breaking loose of the duopoly stranglehold. Yes, we have to deal with the shutout from the mainstream media. We have to deal with nonprofit front groups who refuse to support us. We're shut out of the debates. And there's a strange network of different ballot access laws all across the country. So let's talk about some specific instances of what I mean. First off, we have a mess as concerns endorsed candidates in the Green Party of Connecticut. Some members have noticed with great alarm that the official candidate list submitted to their election authority included at least two registered Democrats. The Green Party of Connecticut's bylaws state that basic requirements for nomination or endorsement of any person for candidacy to public office by the Green Party of Connecticut or any element of the Green Party of Connecticut are that the candidate, for example, is registered to vote or has officially applied to be registered as a Green Party member in his or her town of residence. That seems pretty cut and dried, right? But the argument that the party officers are using for this naked violation of their own rules is that because these candidates come from a local chapter, the state party bylaws don't apply. But the candidates on this list are endorsed by the state party. Here we have a situation in which, as I said before, the rules are treated as optional. And in this case, they may have been disregarded altogether because of favoritism. Now, I realize that some of you stand firm on the concept of working with Democrats. Sure, when local issues arise, we should build coalitions with everyone. But what does it mean to be an independent party as the original intent of their state bylaws seem to be? It certainly does not mean the erosion of green identity or a platform by endorsing Democrats. It's fine to work in coalition, but endorsing another party's candidates means at least a tacit approval of what that party stands for. And it's clear that the Democratic Party doesn't stand for people, peace, and planet over profit. Just ask the DNC and Nancy Pelosi. They'll tell you. Now I want to turn your attention to my state party. I'm a co-chair of the Green Party of Colorado, and our state party is being victimized by gross violations of basic democratic principles and of due process as we fight back a grievance that calls for deaccreditation of our state party from national. And why? Because a group of disgruntled old guard greens in Colorado became incensed that we approved anti-capitalist and anti-oppression bylaws. 
And so they filed a grievance with the GPUS Accreditation Committee to de-accredit us because they refused to use our democratic internal state process to resolve conflicts. This group of people refused to respect the will of the majority in our state council. And because they've been aggressively defending their right to do nothing, instead of focusing on building their local chapters, they've become outnumbered by people who are willing to combat white supremacy and misogyny. And therefore, this little old guard finds no support for any of their disruptive actions. This issue of white supremacy and misogyny is central to this issue. And for the proof of this, we don't need to look any further than their own grievance, which accuses me of, quote unquote, elevating values of social justice and feminism above other party values in the bylaws of two local chapters and twisted them into anti-racism and anti-white male supremacy. Now, you have to understand that the Green Party of Colorado is a decentralized party. It operates on the principles of grassroots democracy. We co-chairs do not have any unilateral authority, and every decision we make in our state party, even the adoption of the new bylaws, goes through a fairly exhaustive democratic process. Every person has a vote, and every person has a voice. But instead of accepting the will of the majority and doing the responsible thing by working toward the next try by building support among other statewide Greens, they literally asked the National Accreditation Committee to de-accredit us and to even kick out my fellow co-chair and I out of office and out of the Green Party for life. Keep in mind that our bylaws allow for a democratic means of overturning any co-chair decisions and if all else fails, it also allows for a process for recalling an officer but they didn't pursue any of those remedies. In other words, our internal grassroots democracy didn't apply to them, and neither did the key value of decentralization by appealing to the great authority in national. And certainly they felt that the key values of social justice and equal opportunity, and even feminism and gen gender equity and respect for diversity didn't apply to them. Some of you have dealt with disruptors locally, and often the choice for Greens is to keep pushing for change or to bail. Too often when leadership doesn't lead on these matters, many Greens just give up. And you would think that a national party with these key values would ignore such a grievance and even abide by its own accreditation committee rules by refusing to get involved in a clearly interpersonal issue. But that's not what happened. The accreditation committee is the body within the national party that approves new state parties or caucuses as federation members. They do investigate high level complaints, such as whether a state party refuses to back our presidential nominee. But this committee's rules are crystal clear that they do not get involved in interpersonal issues at the state or local party level. These should have been clear boundaries that this committee should have respected. However, the co-chairs of the GPUS Accreditation Committee have decided to go against their own rules and recommend to the rest of that committee to de-accredit us. Their accusations against us are wildly inaccurate and even based on flat-out misrepresentations and false conclusions, and they've taken everything that this old guard has said on face value. Worse, they've spent the last 16 months taking in more and more complaints in secret, becoming more and more biased against our state party without so much as giving us a chance to respond to any of it. We finally forced in a thorough point-by-point -point response of every issue this committee raised since the recommendation was made without bothering to include our side of the story. But believe it or not, the co-chairs of this committee continue in making the false claim that we haven't responded and even more shocking, have actually said that it was our responsibility to respond to information from this old guard, even though at no time did they actually tell us there was more to respond to. This is a gross violation of basic principles of due process, and by allowing these people to attempt to override our internal democracy in this way, they show no regard for the basic concept of grassroots democracy that we supposedly hold dear, that supposedly makes us different from the Democrats. By attempting to override due process in grassroots democracy, this committee of the National Party is also overriding the key value of decentralization because the national bylaws state clearly in the ethical standards section, and I quote, the Green Party shall not discriminate against any of the forms chosen by state parties when examining the applications for membership of newly joining states or in its dealings with the current membership. 
by attempting to override our state party's normal resolution process of democratically directed proposals to resolve conflicts, the Green Party of the United States is clearly discriminating against a form of conflict resolution chosen by us. Now, it is true that some of these old garters are no longer members in good standing of the Green Party of Colorado. Not only was our state council turned into a war zone with repeated personal attacks, disruption, and insults, but some of this old guard even hijacked our internal message forum that we use to communicate and vote. This old guard even turned our state meeting into a violent shouting match. Even worse, they literally dug up the old criminal record of one of our members and plastered it all over social media with the intent to cause harm. We decided to take a stand against this level of disrespectful disruption, and we did exercise the rules under our bylaws to revoke rights of participation for many of these individuals. In some cases, some of this old guard have been offered a chance at restorative justice, and when we get to resolution, their rights would be restored. But none have taken us up on this offer. But since then, our state council discussions have been calm examples of principal debate and even disagreement sometimes. And we've gotten a tremendous amount of work done since January of this year when these revocations of participation passed in our state council by very large supermajorities. I myself as a co-chair do not have the power to unilaterally ban anyone from the Green Party of Colorado. I think that if many of you are honest with yourselves, You've considered leaving party work too when disruptive and disrespectful people dominate your organizing space and turn your party into a war zone. Colorado may be one of the very first to take these problems head on, and we did it in a painstakingly democratic process. I should point out here that the relationship of state parties to national is as a member of a federation. We're not subservient to national. Our national bylaws in many places uphold the key value of decentralization because every state party is dealing with a unique set of issues regarding state laws, population, local issues, etc. Therefore, the only time that the accreditation committee has any say in what we do is when we join the federation. They certainly may not break their own rules about getting involved in state level interpersonal issues, and they certainly cannot tell state parties how to conduct their own business because that would be what a centralized authority does. Now, I understand that many of you stand by the consensus process that many states use. So do we. Colorado is a consensus-driven state party. But in order to have consensus, there needs to be a mutual respect and an agreement about how decisions are made. And even within the consensus process, someone who objects can either stand aside or block. Just like in many other state parties, when there's a block, decisions are then made by up or down votes. We share the concern about consensus, but we stand firm by the idea that respect for each other must be established. If a member cannot respect others on the basis of their identity and instead attack, then that person cannot be a valid participant in a consensus-seeking environment. No reasonable person would disagree with that. In order to impose their authoritarian control of our state party internal processes, National's Accreditation Committee has broken many GPUS bylaws and even their own internal committee rules. They've deliberated for 16 months with this old guard in secret without informing other committee members that they were doing so. They tried to restrict legitimately appointed committee members from having a say in the business of the committee. They have threatened and tried to silence voices of dissent within this committee when these voices critique the lack of fairness and transparency in their dealings. They've even coached this old guard group on how to structure their complaint strategically. The worst part of all this is that the coaches of the committee have even gone as far as to put words in the mouth of our state party by claiming that we no longer believe that white supremacy and misogyny are the core impetus for the complaint in the first place. But again, all one has to do is read what this old guard wrote about how they prioritize social justice, that it should take a seat in the back of the bus in relation to environmentalism. By going so far as to speak for us without our approval or even without first checking whether we believe white supremacy and misogyny are factors in this, the co-chairs of the accreditation committee are telling a press community that they don't matter. Now, I have to ask you, is this the Green Party you thought you joined? If not, I encourage you to stand with us in these ways. Say no to bullies in your own state or local party. Share this video and some of the other documents that I'll put in the comments on your website. And use the hashtags DefendGPCO and DefendGreenDemocracy. 
Is the Green Party the party of people, peace, and planet over profit? I would say that some people within it are definitely of that mind. Is the Green Party the party of intersectionality? Right now, I say not really. The oppressed need a fair and transparent party that's going to work for everyone. Is this Green Party salvageable? Yes. If we get clear on our values and commit to democracy, even when it's hard, even when we lose. How are we better than the DNC if we can't even assure ourselves that much?